The development of the electric vehicle industry is progressing rapidly. However, as a disruptive technology, the challenges and issues facing the electric vehicle industry are equally significant. This video will delve into the eight key challenges facing the electric vehicle industry, analyzing their potential risks, challenges, and possible solutions in order to stimulate deep thinking among viewers about this industry. For example, one, should electric vehicles rely entirely on rechargeable batteries as their main power source? Are there more suitable alternatives? Two, is it necessary to restrict the high-speed acceleration performance of electric vehicles for civilian vehicles? Does this performance increase traffic safety risks? Three, does the electromagnetic radiation from electric vehicles pose potential risks to human health? What research and testing are needed to assess this impact? Dear viewers, welcome to our channel. Electric motors, compared to internal combustion engines, are significantly ahead in mechanical efficiency and noise control, representing different levels of technological advancement. Currently, although electric motors have replaced internal combustion engines in many fields, fuel power remains mainstream in transportation tools such as cars, planes, and ships. This is mainly due to the nature of mobility of these tools, as power supply is not as convenient as liquid fuel. Due to the unique properties of electricity, its limitations in mobile applications are obvious. This does not mean that the performance of electric motors is poor, but rather that they face challenges in practical applications. Firstly, electric vehicles mainly rely on rechargeable batteries as their high-power power source. However, I believe that relying on batteries may not be the best choice. Some may question, what else can be used besides batteries? Can it be directly connected to a computer? In fact, the correct approach is to connect the car to the power grid. Although it seems fine to power small devices with phone batteries, powering a car with batteries is another matter, with significant differences in essence and scale between the two. Phones are mainly used for computation and display, while cars are physical entities driven by electricity. Unlike traditional fossil fuels or nuclear energy, electricity, solar energy, hydropower, and wind energy are dynamic forms of energy. Through mature circuit systems, these energy sources can provide stable power for various electrical devices. However, storing electricity in batteries and using it in different locations or during mobility, especially for cars, is this practice reasonable? For small precision devices such as phones, computers, and cameras, battery power is a last resort because they cannot be directly connected to the power grid, and they cannot use gasoline as an energy source either. Even today, long-lasting power supply for phones and cameras remains a challenge, so for cars that require high power and fast movement, Relying on battery power is not only scientifically lacking but also economically insufficient. In the end, whether this path is correct, time will tell. Currently, power batteries are suitable for low-power, short-distance commuting tools such as electric bicycles and buses. However, for transportation tools with high power and long distances, such as cars, ships, and planes, battery energy storage is not an ideal choice. During low power consumption periods, wind and hydropower resources may be wasted, but the cost of storing these energy sources in the form of electricity is too high. Considering China's strong battery industry consumes a large amount of resources, and batteries are essentially only energy storage containers with limited value in cycle charging and discharging, a large number of charging piles are also needed to support them. This practice may not be wise because in the long run, the value of stored electrical energy may not outweigh the cost of the batteries themselves. Converting surplus electricity into new energy sources, such as synthetic fuels or hydrogen energy, may be a more economical, scientific, and practical choice. Europe and the United States may slow down the development and production of electric vehicles for similar reasons. Electric vehicles have impressive acceleration capabilities, which are undoubtedly attractive on the racetrack. 
However, for civilian vehicles and public transportation vehicles used in daily life, this high-speed acceleration may not be necessary or even suitable. Imagine if a car could accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3 to 5 seconds, how significant is this for ordinary drivers in practical terms? Excessive acceleration may increase risks and the likelihood of accidents, especially serious ones. So, what kind of acceleration performance is appropriate for civilian vehicles? This indeed requires scientific research and precise measurement. Overemphasizing rapid acceleration may lead to serious issues. By analogy, if everyone drives cars with rocket-like acceleration, the safety risks will undoubtedly increase exponentially. Is this a principle that we should all understand? Thirdly, I am well aware that the power source of our electric cars is direct current, and apparently, their electromagnetic radiation is not significant. However, we cannot ignore the contribution of the power of electric motors to electromagnetic radiation. Additionally, whether complex electronic control systems will increase serious electromagnetic radiation and whether this will affect our health are questions that require in-depth research and testing. The impact of electromagnetic radiation on human health has always been a topic of concern. Although there is currently no conclusive scientific evidence that low-level electromagnetic radiation has significant negative effects on human health, we cannot rule out this possibility. Especially in environments where people are exposed to electromagnetic fields for long periods, such as electric car passengers and drivers, they may be more susceptible to potential effects. The relationship between motion sickness and electromagnetic radiation is also a question worth exploring. Some people may experience motion sickness when riding electric vehicles, and whether this symptom is related to electromagnetic radiation needs scientific research to confirm. If such a correlation does exist, then the electromagnetic radiation issue of electric vehicles will become a serious problem that requires measures to protect the health of passengers and drivers. To address these issues, we need to conduct more research and testing. First, we can measure the electromagnetic radiation of electric vehicles to understand their actual radiation levels. At the same time, we can also conduct long-term epidemiological studies to observe the health status of electric vehicle passengers and drivers to determine whether there are health risks related to electromagnetic radiation. If the research results show that the electromagnetic radiation of electric vehicles indeed has adverse effects on human health, then we need to consider measures to reduce radiation levels. This may include improving the design and materials of electric vehicles to reduce the generation and propagation of electromagnetic radiation. In addition, we can strengthen the health monitoring of electric vehicle drivers and passengers to promptly identify and address any health issues related to electromagnetic radiation. Fourth, with the increasing capacity of batteries, the risk of short circuits increases, which may lead to explosions and fires. Currently, there is a lack of effective measures to deal with this issue, and once combustion occurs, it is difficult to control. Real fire data for electric vehicles is difficult to obtain, and collisions cannot be completely avoided, with unclear high-speed collision standards for battery safety. It is hoped that in the future, power batteries will be safer than fuel cars in collisions. Fifth. What needs to be considered is the inevitable impact of vehicle electrification on the mechanical manufacturing industry. Suppose there are mistakes in the electrification process of vehicles, then the regression of mechanical manufacturing, especially traditional fuel vehicles, may lead to irreversible losses. In addition, if there is widespread and persistent power outage in the future, public safety will be seriously threatened. We should not overlook the fact that while limited oil supply is a problem, the power supply chain may be more susceptible to deliberate interference in abnormal situations. Herefore, strategic experts may also need to carefully consider this issue. Sixth, an issue worth noting is that as more and more people turn to electric vehicles, the number of vehicles relying on oil will significantly decrease. This means that traditional fuel tax revenue, road maintenance fees, 
will face a serious decline. Road maintenance fees have always been one of the main sources of funds for maintaining and building roads. If the existing financial structure remains unchanged, the funds used by the government for road construction and maintenance will become less and less, and may even disappear. This raises a key question, how will our roads be maintained when these taxes are greatly reduced? If there is not enough investment, the quality and safety of roads may be affected, thereby affecting the safety and convenience of all road users. To address this fiscal gap, the government may have to seek new sources of funds. One possible measure is to impose new taxes on electricity supplied similar to fuel taxes. Although this seems like a reasonable adjustment to the current situation, such a practice will undoubtedly weaken the advantages of electric vehicles compared to traditional fuel vehicles. Originally, electric vehicles had economic benefits due to fuel efficiency or no fuel consumption. However, under the pressure of the new tax system, their operating cost advantages may be significantly reduced or even disappear. Furthermore, if the advantages of electric vehicles are reduced, people may reconsider purchasing fuel cars. However, by that time, as the popularity of electric vehicles has become quite high, fuel vehicle manufacturers may have reduced production scale or transformed to focus on the production of electric vehicles, which may lead to a lack of high-quality traditional fuel vehicle models on the market for consumers to choose from. At that time, consumers may have to turn their attention back to foreign manufacturers to purchase fuel vehicles produced in other countries. This may not only increase the cost of purchasing cars, but also exacerbate the competitive pressure on the domestic automobile industry. Seventh, if China's electric vehicles cannot meet the demands of the world automobile market, due to restrictions or other reasons, and cannot go global, being self-sufficient in production and consumption, then what is the future of the automobile industry? China's goal of overtaking on the bend is not just about being self-sufficient, is it? Eighth, about the choice of electric vehicles. Here are some suggestions. Suppose you are enthusiastic about electric vehicles and want to buy one, how do you choose? Which brand is more trustworthy? First, I suggest that you consider the stability of the company. It is safer to purchase electric vehicles produced by car manufacturers that are unlikely to go bankrupt in the next five years. At present, Tesla and BYD are relatively stable and reliable choices in the industry, while emerging electric vehicle brands may have higher risks. However, I am more inclined to recommend pure electric or hybrid vehicles produced by traditional fuel car manufacturers. This is because even if there are fluctuations in the electric vehicle market in the future, many electric vehicle manufacturers may face difficulties, while these companies with a background in fuel car business are relatively more stable. They not only have layouts in the electric vehicle field but also, due to their deep accumulation in the fuel car market, even when the electric vehicle market is cold, they are less likely to go bankrupt. Therefore, their electric vehicle products are likely to continue to enjoy after-sales service and guarantees, providing consumers with a more reassuring choice. Finally, let me summarize for the readers, I hope you have gained something, inspiration and reflection. Strategy is strategy, but we are ordinary people, we should think long-term for ourselves, which is the most important. The above are eight questions I thought about regarding electric vehicles, or eight points worth considering. Not all are necessarily problems, but only by solving more problems can electric vehicles have a chance to be the future. Although the electric vehicle industry has broad prospects, it also faces many challenges. We need to deeply understand these issues and actively seek solutions to promote the healthy development of the electric vehicle industry. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned for the next exciting content. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.